Getting new, younger buyers into your luxury brand is hugely important. Hook them while they're young with a fashionable, great driving car, and they might keep returning to your showrooms until they retire. That's the goal of a vehicle like the X-T5, Cadillac's newest crossover. Now, it replaces the SRX, which for a long time was Cadillac's best-selling model, so it's got really big shoes to fill. But the real question is whether the X-T5 can continue that legacy of success in a fiercely competitive segment. How does it look? The X-T5 continues much of the striking, straight-edge design we've seen on other new Cadillacs. The front grille is huge compared to the side of the car, but I really like the vertical lights that are a signature of all new Cadillacs. The rear is interesting in that it basically just looks like a CTS or ATS sedan, but with a tall rear window above the taillights. Overall though, this is a very modern and forward-thinking design. How's the storage? With the rear seats raised, you get a generous 30 cubic feet of storage space. And this X-T5 has a cargo organizer to keep stuff in place. Unfortunately, the load floor is on the high side, and no thanks to the intrusive wheel arches, it's a little bit narrow. But it's really easy to fold the rear seats flat, and then you get 63 cubic feet of storage space. You can stow all your hydration needs in two cup holders up front or in the door pockets, and a modestly sized center console will house other stuff. There's a special slot that holds your phone for wireless charging, and it also serves as a place to thread USB cables for older phones. There are quite a few little cubbies and storage spaces up front, including a suede lined one so your phone or other items won't slide or rattle, plus a really large bin below the center console that's hidden from view when you're driving. Is it roomy? Room up front is great, even if I move the seat up a little higher than normal, and there's a lot of elbow room at either side of the driver's seat, so I never feel cramped up here. The back seats slide forward and back and recline a little bit, so you can pick between maximum cargo capacity or more legroom. Speaking of which, legroom is fine for adults, although with this fancy sunroof, headroom is only just adequate for someone like me who is average height. How does the interior feel? The X-T5's cabin has a lot of nice materials, with wood trim, this leather and suede in this maple sugar color, although the black plastics aren't too special. One thing I really like is that the climate controls are now real physical buttons. A lot of older Cadillacs used these touch-sensitive controls that were kind of tough to use while you were driving without taking your eyes off the road. Is it well equipped? Aside from the very base X-T5, the answer is yes. The luxury trim level, for instance, already comes with heated front seats, leather seats, the giant sunroof, parking sensors, blind spot warning, lane keep assist, and low speed auto braking. If you want all the toys and goodies, go for the X-T5 Platinum. Highlights include a head-up display, a heated steering wheel, 20-inch wheels, continuously variable damping suspension, illuminated door handles, LED headlights, the rear camera mirror, and a color digital instrument cluster. How's the infotainment system? I really like the 8-inch touchscreen in this car. It's similar to the system used in many GM cars, and it has simple graphics, quick responses, and great functionality. This sliding volume control isn't great, but it's easier to use than the slide controls in other Cadillacs, or even in Hondas. Features include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, weather information, a surround view camera, and a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot, though data fees apply. There are two USB ports for front seat passengers and two in the rear. Is it a good daily driver? The X-T5's cabin is really, really quiet when you're on the move, which is what you want from a luxury crossover. But in other respects, it doesn't really blow any of its competitors out of the water. The automatic transmission, for instance, is a little bit lazy and hesitant at times, although the worst part of it has to be the shifter. It's just so convoluted when you're trying to shift between drive and reverse in a parking lot. I wish they just had a traditional shifter. Another problem, there's huge pillars in the back which really make big blind spots. Now, the rear view camera system does help, but it's still annoying in everyday driving. Is it fun to drive? Honestly, this is where the X-T5 really disappoints me. We know that Cadillac can make really sporty cars. The ATS and CTS are great examples of that. But the X-T5 is not that fun to drive. 
the suspension, the ride isn't that comfortable, but it's not sporty either. The engine has a lot of power, but most of the time it just feels lazy and sluggish. And the steering and brakes are both really soft and numb. It's a disappointment when so many of this car's rivals are so much better to drive. How's the fuel economy? The front-wheel drive XT5 gets 19 miles per gallon city and 27 mpg highway, while all-wheel drive models like this one get 1 mpg lower in each rating. To help compensate for the fact that all-wheel drive models get worse fuel economy, they get a slightly larger gas tank. It's 3 gallons bigger, so you can go a little bit farther before you fill up. How much is it? XT5 pricing is very competitive with its rivals. It starts at $40,000 and steadily moves up from there. $46,000 for the luxury trim level, $54,000 for premium luxury, and about $63,000 to start for the platinum model. You can easily price out this car's competitors into the $60,000 range too, so it's not really an outlier. What are the negatives? That electric shifter is really annoying and it feels pretty cheap inside the cabin. The XC5 also isn't that much fun to drive. And even though this V6 engine is pretty economical, it's a shame that we can't get the more efficient 2-liter turbo 4 that's available in other countries. Who should buy it? What I like about the XC5 is that it's flashy and youthful and a little bit different. It looks good inside and out and there's a lot of great technology on offer. Sadly, it doesn't really drive as well as most of its competition. But if you like the way it looks and you want something different than the luxury crossovers all your friends are driving, then the Cadillac's a great choice. If you like this Why Buy video, don't forget we've got a new one every Thursday. So subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see them all. You can also leave a comment below letting us know what you want to see in future Why Buy videos. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or at motorone.com.